What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pod and Play here on NGRRadio.com and YouTube.com slash NGRRadio. I'm Corey, and joined, as always, by my co-host and, and buddy and Uncharted player, Eddie V, Edward Varnell. It's time to get lost in this legacy. Hey, everybody. <laughs> that retro code, always coming up with some phrases. And also, we are joined by... Nerd Overdrive's Uncharted super fan, El Capitan himself, yes! also recently elected a Twitch affiliate, Ray Osorio. What's going on, guys? Rise above. <laughs> yes! Ray, Ray, why don't you go ahead and plug yourself, since you are a uh, now a Twitch affiliate I saw on Facebook the other day. Yes, I am now a Twitch affiliate. Uh, you can find me twitch.tv forward slash El Capitan plays, and that's C-A-P-I-T-A-N. Um, that's the Spanish spelling of it. So you can find me there. Uh, you can also find me on the Nerd Overdrive podcast, youtube.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive, fb.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive, and twitch.tv forward slash phx underscore overdrive. Yeah. Recently making a comeback. Yeah, we just rebooted, so it's interesting. Yeah. Nice. And I have Crying Baby in the background, so if for some reason it does pick it up. You That's know what? What's happening. You know what? Things happen. I also will probably have a crying baby in the background at some point. So, <laughs> uh, you are not alone. And then we I also have... have a crying baby right here named Edvy. Hey, wait! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Like I had no kids. I don't cry. I'm just kidding, Ed. I I love you. So, uh, we are playing. I guess we should tell everybody what we're playing. Uh, we're playing Uncharted: Lost Legacy. The, uh. I would say it's it's almost like a mainline game at this point, but it's the it's the Uncharted Four DLC ex- expansion DLC standalone. Yeah, it was standalone DLC that came out for it. Yeah, so uh, it's the first first Uncharted game that does not star Nathan Drake, which is pretty cool because it it's uh, it's one of those games that proves that uh, you don't really need Nathan Drake to pl- make an Uncharted game. Uh, as much as I I enjoy Nathan Drake and Sully and 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 uh, you know that cast of characters, uh, Chloe and, and Nadine seem to uh, have pulled one off on their own. So it's a good time, good time. So Ray, you're a super fan. I, w- I would say I, I would say I, I, I am the, very much a super fan. I, I mean, was, my ringtone since I think Uncharted Three has been. Drake's theme, and then the, my text tone and email tone is the treasure sound from yeah. Uncharted. So yeah, it's been it's been the same since like 2011. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, look, we brought you on because you are the Uncharted super fan, and you you probably have the most knowledge of these games out of anybody that I personally know, uh, outside of maybe even the well, I don't know the creators. I guess it wouldn't make say outside of the creators at that point, but. Uh, why why do you love uncharted so much um i came along the uncharted games uh, i was you know kind of early in the playstation 3 life cycle and i was kind of looking for um some games to play and things like that um and it was just one of those things that i wanted to try out and then i just fell in love with the characters you know because nathan drake you know um and then elena and all that and sully and the way they get into trouble um the one of the biggest um, one of the biggest influences for Uncharted that I that I kind of feel has that parallel was Indiana Jones. Yeah, like I was all over Indiana Jones when I was a kid. Like, oh yeah, super Indiana Jones fan. So when Looks you're like just we like, need a, hey, I guess when we do the Indiana Jones movie commentary on Arsenal X, what do you say? Ed? You know. <laughs> so with that, it was just like, hey, you're telling me that I can play as like this Indiana Jones like character. Where he gets he gets himself into these you know tough spots and tight situations, and you know he has nothing but his wits and his, a gun and his fists. Like, come on now, what's not to love, Ed? You're no, because he's gonna interrupt it. Well, I know actually. he is, dude. You should you should have heard me, on, dude, on Arsenal X the other day. I got mad at Ed because he started to interrupt me, and it was like two or thirty in the morning. <laughs> I, I edited it out, but of the show, by the way, because I was like, I was like, that's a, that was a little too snarky, but. Uh, no, I, no, I, I have nothing to interrupt. I'm listening. Uh, but anyways, sorry, Ray, continue. 
Yeah. So I mean, and I start. I'm starting a new save for this. So just FYI to any of my my viewers, I'm because I'm streaming this live right now. Um, which would be one of the reasons why you're not hearing the audio from the other guys because they're actually recording their podcast right now. So you're not. You're just gonna only hear me. So you got to kind of make heads or tails of whatever I'm saying. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, but Un- Uncharted is just a, a game franchise that uh, became near and dear to my heart. Um, I love the characters. I love all the, um, you know, all the things that you, you're able to do and, you know, the situations you get in. And yeah, it's a little unrealistic. And uh, we have this uh, thing that we call Nathan Drake. We call him the, the world's greatest mass murderer or whatever, like lovable mass murderer. Because <laughs> yeah. he's just killing all these pirates and all this stuff, and we're just like, man, he's just, like, sitting there murdering all these kids, all the poor infant, you know, the, or- the all the orphan children, and all these, like, crazy situations he gets himself in. And it's just like, yeah, at first it's, like, a lot about, you know, money, because he's like, oh, we could do this, we can get rich, and, you know, but then after a while it just becomes about other things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, like I said, or like you said, like, the, the biggest reason why... You know, I was drawn to the series in the first place was because it was basically Indiana Jones, right? I love Indiana Jones as a kid. Like, uh, I remember when my dad took me to see uh, the Last Crusade in the theater. You know, they I I th- I'm pretty sure that movie was out before I was born, but like they had a second running around the time the the Star Wars 25th anniversary uh, special editions were out in theaters. Like, yeah. our theaters showed Indiana Jones as well. And, like, we went and saw that, and, like, I, I love those movies. And the reason why I bought a PS3 was uh, the, the Uncharted 1 and 2 dual pack and then God of War 3 were all out at, the, like, around the same time. Uh, so I bought all those with my PlayStation 3, and, like, I'm... The, Ed and I talk about this a lot. There, This genre seems to be fall into two camps lately, uh, you know, one being Uncharted and the other game kind of being the Tomb Raider reboot. And uh, as a game, I think, you know, we we kind of lean more towards Tomb Raider in terms of, of gameplay and stuff. And just, you know, and, and I know that after that first reboot game, uh, Tomb Raider really went in a different direction than Uncharted, where Uncharted started focusing more on characters and story and stuff, where, you know, Tomb Raider kind of became more of like a, almost like an action RPG light type thing and focused on puzzles and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but the one thing that I still think Uncharted does really well is character interaction and uh, the relationships that build upon the characters through the four, four, five, six games, I guess, if you count Golden Abyss. Uh, if you played all of them, you really feel that connection between all of them. And, and I th- I think I th- I think this game does that really well, and it, it tells uh, decent stories with with the relationships and like you said the shenanigans that they get into, really over the top a lot of the time, <laughs> like in Uncharted Two when you're climbing up a train when you're like, oh, when the train <laughs> the train scene when it's freaking yeah when it's dying, I remember there's the one um the was the one part of the first Uncharted. Where you're on the river and on the like the the jet skis or whatever, mm-hmm. I hate that part with a passion. <laughs> I hate that part so much. Yeah. Um. Then there were like the train things, but yeah, you know, going through the different parts of, you know, going to you know Shambhala and then going you know to, you know Nepal and all that stuff, and then you know in the third one, you're just going to the you know the city of brass and all that stuff, and it's it's just really really crazy, and a lot of fun, and then you know the fourth one. Um, actually kind of introduced um, a really different dynamic for things um, because they were kind of showing us Nathan Drake kind of, you know, uh, growing up, yeah. I guess, per se. Like, he's, like, trying to leave the... He has, like, a real job. And... Life, yeah, you know, trying to leave the Fortune Hunter life behind and, you know, trying to do right by Elena because, you know, spoilers, they get together eventually. <laughs> surprise. But, <laughs> surprise. It's like, surprise! You know, but... Uh that whole thing and just just the way the games are you know kind of orchestrated i mean the music is great the visuals are all have always been amazing yeah you know going back to the original ps3 with uncharted uncharted drake's fortune 
Yeah. And then Uncharted 2 really pushed that bar so far. And then, you know, we had Uncharted 3, um, which which did a whole lot more, but it just but still my favorite is probably still Uncharted 2. Yeah. I mean, I still think 2 is my favorite as well. Uh I don't know. I, I for some reason I 2 just really like I don't know. I it really it was like the Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2 bit where like the proof of concept in one was there and then two really made made the series what it is today you know like kind of uh well i mean assassin's creed has changed so much since then too but you know what i mean like they did they did a lot of uh they cleaned up a lot of things they 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 really made it what it is today and and two is is probably my favorite followed by three um i mean i i know i'm kind of in the minority but i I don't want to say I didn't care for 4, but it was, I mean, that development cycle that it went through and changing hands and everything kind of, it really changed that game, and I don't know if it was for better or for worse, and like, I let, let me ask you this question, actually, and then we'll spin off from there. What, what did you think of them adding uh, Nate's brother? I mean, I, I, I mean, it was an interesting choice to do that. But I mean, for Drake's last hurrah, I don't see why we needed the new character, you know, so to speak. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, they find they find a way, you know, kind of retcon him in and make it all work, you know, whatever. Because in, if you recall in Uncharted Three, we got that whole scene of playing as young Drake and all that. Yeah. Um, that whole chapter or whatever. Um, so we we still didn't know a whole lot about you know Drake and his past history and stuff like that. So they kind of use that to their advantage with bringing Sam in, but. You know, it's just it's just one of those things where it was just like, okay, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And um, I know the beginning missions in Uncharted Four were kind of a, a pain when they uh, when they had you, uh, you know, kind of do kind of do things and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But other than that, it's just been. I mean, I feel like I feel like the beginning missions though were kind of purposeful, though, because like it kind of. I, I, it it they needed to introduce uh his brother somehow right they 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 had to do it somehow with uh where am i supposed to go i have no idea where i'm supposed to go i'm so lost right now <laughs> uh that like the the jail scene like i feel like they really had to do that to introduce his brother and and really make sure you knew who he was yeah uh, uh because they had never introduced him before uh, but I mean, I felt it was necessary to introduce that character, uh, Sam, right? Sam, that's his name, right? His brother's name is Sam. Mm -hmm. right? I remember that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I played it, but I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the, I feel like another adventure with just Sully would have been okay enough for me. You know, I, I, I feel like they did that just in case they wanted, like, Sony wanted to continue the series without uh, Naughty Dog at some point, which right now there's rumors that they're, that one of the studios is working on an Uncharted game. I forget what they said, who they said it was, but uh, it's a collaboration with Naughty Dog, so I'm guessing Naughty Dog's just kind of overseeing the project while the studio makes it, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I just... Four was an interesting kind of send off for Drake, uh, but again, like the, I just don't think Sam was really needed to do that. Uh, but like you said, this series we've been watching Nate kind of grow up, and that's what Four was kind of all about. And it kind of almost reflected Naughty Dog as a studio, you know, as like them growing up and kind of almost growing out of Uncharted, and moving away from that. To a sense. Yeah, I mean, because originally Uncharted was supposed to be, what, a Jack and Daxter game or something like that, and they totally just put it on its head and decided to go about it a different way, and that's how we got Uncharted. Yeah. You know, that was definitely an interesting thing. Did you see the concept art of the realistic Jack and Daxter? <laughs> the realistic looking Jack and Daxter? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's, that's, some, that's some scary stuff. I mean, I, I don't really want to see Daxter realistic, to be honest with you. It's kind of you know, scary. Uh, may I, it's a Jack? Yeah. Ed, you can chime uh, in anytime you want. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> we just. I think we, I scared him. I know. I we think just. I him, I was like, Ed, no. We we <laughs> we just know Ed's feelings on Uncharted in terms of like, you know, the game, and we just like to give Ed a hard time. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to be positive on this episode. I was told that I had to be positive, so that's what I'm going to be. Um. The one thing I could give Naughty Dog about uh, just them, first of all, designing games is that they're really talented, really good. They're very fitting for Sony. I don't see them being on any kind of console. If there was like an independent studio like Insomniac, um, I, I think their games just wouldn't work. Um, work on anybody else's consoles by uh, from Sony. Um, love Jack and Daxter, but I. I, when I got Uncharted, the first one, you know, thought it was an okay game. It wasn't nothing major. And then when I played 2, I was kind of upset about some things with that. Needless to say, I think 3 was really good. And it, what, were, what were you upset about with 2? I think I was upset about 2, and this kind of happened with a little bit with 4, is that Half of the game, or let me phrase that, seventy-five percent of the game is a flashback, and a lot of parts of that flashback wasn't needed to to like start the game off. It kind because of, it, it just felt like there's really no development with any of the characters or the plot for this. So why not just start from the beginning, like the actual first level? And not oh, you're talking about start. You're talking about starting with the, start, the train scene. Train, and then, dude. Yeah. I, I think that was a great way to start because they're just like, oh man, Drake's got himself in this mess, and then you're, I then think, you'd have to find out how he got there. I think it would have been like, I, I I'm of I'm of two minds of that. Where like I, I liked seeing the train scene and then seeing how Drake got there, right? But I think that could have been just. I feel like it would have almost been better as like a cutscene almost uh to start the game and then and then you start like that second mission is when you're doing that uh night heist right that's Mm. because it doesn't it doesn't put you catch you up to date it just makes you do that whole section over with and then it just makes the game longer and stuff so it kind of feels like well this section i understand what you're trying to build up to but it wasn't needed. The same with the same thing with four. It's just that you're built. You didn't need this built up. You just should have just let the whole, uh, the first part of the game happen, from when he's exploring in the sea, learning controls, and then going on with the game. But I mean, you know, some of the stuff and some of the like. Th- one of the big things that kind of maybe disappointed into in a sense, and like I said, not trying to trash the game or anything, was some of the parts that you're on the train part, where you're riding through the train, you gotta fight this military man, and you're hitting him with all the um, arsenal that you got all these guns and everything, and then it looks like he kind of faints or goes down. But then Chloe comes in, Shoots him with a handgun in the head after even you've been doing headshots to him, and he dies. And it's just like, okay, this cutscene and with this battle doesn't connect. And I, and I and I think that was the kind of thing that was just like, uh Naughty Dog. But, you guys but could, every game has to have their set piece, and they chose to put their set piece yeah. with that. I, um, with, I the, think, with the train scene, and and yeah. I get that you know, um, you know, different people have different taste of things because mm. you know I I prefer narrative and storytelling, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in any kind of given order as long as eventually I get the full context. You know, it's and one I, of those things I where do. I want the you know I I would prefer to get the full context, and I you know it doesn't bother me. I, I think. For me, it was just that why have this big fight thing when one of the weakest weapons in the game has finished off your boss? After, after good, like I can understand if he had on, uh, 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 if he had on a mask or something to block his face, 
And then you did all this fighting, you knocked it off, and then it went into that cutscene. Uh, so I guess it was kind of like a connection editing problem, but I'm like I did enjoy it for what it was. I enjoyed it for I actually said because uh, I did a review for Uncharted Four. I actually said this is one of the reasons. You're right over there, Ed. Yeah, I am. Sorry, oh. my mic fell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Way to knock the mic over, Ed. Ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for those of you guys tuned in, um, this pod and play is actually going to come on to uh, on to my friend's podcast, Corey and Ed, who I'm talking with right now. Um, Corey, where, where can they find you again so I can give them the right area? Oh, you can you can find us on youtube.com slash NGR radio or NGR radio dot com. OK, so you can find them at youtube.com forward slash NGR radio or NGR radio dot com. Right. Yep. And yes. pod and play. Season three starts, or season four, excuse me, starts on March 2nd. March 2nd starts their season four of their pod and play series, which this is a part of. Um, And you'll be able to tune in there, and you'll be able to catch the episode to hear all the audio as we're talking about it. So definitely feel free to check that there. Sorry I'm over here, you know, interrupting the flow of things and getting more information and all that. But I um, I guess we could have done this through the PlayStation 4 chat. I that would have. I I just that's because that's how we did it last time. I think. Yeah, I know. I just I just I mean I I was I wasn't really thinking. I mean, you said you were gonna stream it. I'm like, oh cool. And then I was like, oh wait. Like it's it's different because like when we when we stream stuff or when we record or stream stuff, we usually do it through Xbox. Uh, just because you know we usually have Jesse with us too, and yeah. uh. He has the Xbox, so we usually I just use the Xbox party chat thing on my PC, and then it just captures everything that way. Uh, I just I didn't think about that for PlayStation because I very rarely play multiplayer stuff on PlayStation. Yeah, no, it's just it's just been. Um, I have my Elgato. I have to set back up because after I moved and everything, most of my stuff just ended up going into a box. Yeah, and and I just and my rig is currently packed up because I've been using my laptop and stuff, so. Um, so it just was one of those things where it was just like it was just easier for me to just kind of keep streaming through the PS4 for now. Yeah. Um, until I can get around to you know doing that. Yeah, I mean I've been I've been streaming through my Xbox lately too, and it's just it's just like way almost way easier to do it through the console. It's way less of a hassle. Well, the <laughs> thing is, is because then you have to worry about drivers and then sound not showing right, and then like um, for example, when we did our most recent episode of um you know Nerd Overdrive when we came back. Um, we had the issue where we were getting the double audio, so it was causing like a reverb thing to happen. Mm-hmm. And it was just one of those things where it just, you know, it was just like, you know, that kind of thing. What the heck? I miss what she told, what she had me do. Um, and I can't, I mean, it, it I know, sucks I've too. played this before. It's just been a while. It sucks. It's been a while. Sorry guys. It sucks too, because like anytime we record something, I can't hear sound just based on the way we record stuff. Oh uh, well, I mean, and that's all with the growing pains of everything, man. Like that's just the, the way we kind of. Yeah, like I mean, if I'm if I'm streaming stuff, I can plug my headset into my controller and oh. hear sound just fine. But at the same time, it, if if I'm chatting with anybody at all, uh, like trying to record their voice too, I can't. I just can't hear game sound at all. And I'm sure there's a way to do that. I just am not. I just haven't. You know, try to figure it out. out. I, yeah, well, I haven't taken the time to figure it out because we've been doing so much outside of 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 just trying to sit down and figure stuff out. Like I I purchased a subscription to uh, Adobe Premiere like two or three months ago, and I have yet to sit down and actually try to use it. Oh wow! Yeah, I've, I've been I've been so busy. I, I like I I feel like oh this is this right? Nope. Okay. Oh, oh this really is where I started. I just I just got turned around in a big circle. Uh but you know like I've been we've been doing breakouts for the shows now. Uh and that's taken up a lot more time than I originally anticipated. Uh Yeah, Corey, you're you're an ambitious man, my friend. I know. I have so much respect for you, but you are an amb- ambitious man, my friend. Yeah, cuz you're like, "Hey, by the way, we're going to do this anthem show, we're doing this, we're doing that." I'm like, 
is Corey ever going to sleep? Like, no. is Corey ever going to like rest? No. And, and, relax? and what 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 makes me do less sleep is the fact that I can't record anything until the baby goes to bed because a I want to spend time with the baby, but b she's like loud and a baby and needs taken care of. <laughs> so like I have to do everything after eight thirty at night. <laughs> And like we were supposed to do something like this last last week, and I was just and Ed's like, "Hey, remember when we were supposed to record Pod and Play last Tuesday?" I'm like, "Yeah, I was just tired. <laughs> I needed He's to like, sleep. I was just exhausted. And I needed I to can't, yeah. I needed to sleep one day last week. <laughs> no, you you started streaming. That's what happened. Oh no, well I started streaming Apex Legends, but I only streamed for like 20 minutes. Oh, and then I was like, ugh, so tired." Everybody kept talking about Apex, and I was like, "What is this? What is this new game everybody's talking about that's free to play and kind of like uh, Overwatch and Blackout mixed together?" I like both of those things. So, and then then it was like it was before ten o'clock, and I was like, "Man, I'm going to cry myself to sleep right now." Ooh, a treasure. Yeah, no, we'll see with me that I, I have a similar thing, like now that I've been streaming and stuff, um, and I've been having to do it with the baby around. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I have a guest star, you know, because, you know, and usually I'll have her with me, um, you know, oh, she'll be sitting you, here in her swing and it, stuff like that. And Oh, if you listen, if you listen to Nerds Gone Rogue, you can hear, you can hear cries and you can hear bagel in the background on Matt's side, so... We have we have multiple guest stars on our show. <laughs> oh man, it's it's a good time having a baby, and uh, you know she's 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 great. You know we like sometimes when when we're together, I stream or I I just play video game music on on YouTube, uh -huh. which she really likes. Like I I try to find like piano versions or you know, semi-orchestrated versions of, of video game music, and she'll listen to it, and she loves it, like Zelda or Destiny or, uh, you know, games like that, and that have kind of big, powerful scores. Uh, but speaking of babies and spoilers for Uncharted 4, if you haven't played it by now, why not? Why haven't you played <laughs> it yet? But Yeah, pretty much. What did you think of that ending? The epilogue on it? Yeah. Oh uh, man, I'm I'm hoping we get I'm hoping we get uh, another Uncharted game with with their daughter. Yeah. Like I really hope that we get another I because she don't. found it and because but the thing is is like you have to think though like Elena did so much probably to try and protect her from that life. Yeah. Because she knows what that life entails. Yeah. But you know that now that she knows who Drake who Drake really is, it's she's gonna be curious and start to go that way. Yeah. And so which, in other words, it's Tomb Raider from Naughty Dog, like actual Tomb Raider from Naughty Dog. Why not? I like Tomb Raider. I mean, I mean, technically, it's Uncharted from Naughty Dog because uh, even though Tomb Raider, yes, Tomb Raider the original was first, Square Enix and all that stuff, they had no, they had no desire to do another Tomb Raider game. Oh, yeah. But then, with the success of, with the success, oh crap, um, with the success of, how do you counter? Isn't there a counter move? Uh, just triangle, triangle, and then circle yeah. is dodge. Get I mean, it's. I mean, uh, it would be. It, it would be just un too expected, so that's why I said, "Oh, it's it'll be Well, I think I, th I think the most ahead. expected move was to be to do a spinoff with Sam, I, which is what I thought they were gonna do when they kind of were teasing Lost Legacy. I was like, "Oh, they're making like an expansion with Sam and Sully instead of you know Drake." So like I, I, I could see them actually going both ways. They could actually spin the series off into three separate. You know things. Where and they then, could, like they we, we already saw the adventures with Nadine and you know with with Nadine and Chloe, so I mean that could be its own you know continuing thing. Then you know we'll see you know whatever it is with the daughter hopefully. Yeah. Um, 
like like to me like to me uncharted is like a solid eight series that i could i could probably sit and play through every couple years you know like i i'm not the biggest uncharted fan I, i'll admit that i've said as much uh especially to ray at some point probably <laughs> but like i i en i enjoy playing the games and i will play them through i thought uncharted 4 was a little long you know in the tooth but like those first three games are kind of like a perfect length, like ten to twelve hour adventures. Just play through to the end. It's a it's a good romp in time, and uh, like I could I could see them trying to do something like that every couple years between the three. You know, because like they essentially almost become different franchises at that point if you're doing three separate stories. I mean, I don't think we really need three separate stories going on at oh, one I don't, time. You know, I don't, but, I don't but, either. But I mean, like that's theoretically they could do that, and they would be kind of different. Well, it, the the problem is is that even if they had multiple stories, they're going to still follow the same design. As in, half of the game is going to be flashback, and then they'll just go into um, the present. So I don't feel like Naughty Dog is going to change. But anything. there isn't that. There isn't really like. Flashback not, is uh, a very yeah, minor not, part of the yeah. series, but the, see, but they I only feel did like it, it. They only did it in like two. They, there, two wasn't really a flashback. It was more of like a story setup to make you wonder how he got there. I'd yeah. say same, I'd say same three and four are the only two situations that have true, that have that have true, true flashback. flashback. Yeah, and I thought it was, it's the same. It, but they they treated two and four as flashbacks where. You at the current point, and then it goes to how everything started. It has some flashback flashback points when Nathan Drake is a kid, but it's still but the I mean, same design. It's but it's it's still a it's still a, a story tor- you know it's a, st- a storytelling vehicle, mm-hmm. so to speak. So it's not it's not a true flashback I mean, because movies, it's not like movies do it know, too. It's, it's yeah, not like movies, yeah movies do do it too. But it's just it, but it's just like. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's just me, like, don't set it up with a set piece and then have all of this flashback stuff. But and then the we do the same life. set piece over. Oh, uh, we do the same uh, set piece over and then just make that from the present time almost longer than what you just did. Because you, you would think that if you got back to the part where the game starts at, then maybe two or three levels you'll be getting to the ending. I mean, like, I, I kind of like it when games open as a set piece. Like, you know, like, mm-hmm. God, like God of War 2 and 3, especially, really? open with, like, a huge set piece that was, like, oh, my gosh, man. Like, when you when you fought the Colossus of Rhodes, like, I I thought that was awesome. And then, like, when you're climbing uh, Gaia in 3, like, I, I think games that start out with a set piece really... Because, like, they they probably have, like statistics of like if a game starts out boring people aren't going to stick with it you know like those type of statistics are probably out there you know i mean perfect example we look what we got with a bad a way to do it the like the the bad way to do a set piece or like a setup story that way was assassin's creed 3 i don't know if you guys both played that oh sure did played it on wii u that prologue with with playing you know connor's father and stuff Longest prologue ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? You'll be able to replay it in a few weeks. Yeah, I actually got the Odyssey uh, season pass, whatever gold edition. So yeah, I'm, wait, I'm it, waiting to see I if it, it. I'm waiting to see if it's announced for Switch. To be honest with you, because like they said, uh, the remaster it was listed for Switch on Ubisoft's website ahead of the yeah. Nintendo Direct tomorrow. So, I mean, as of this recording, we'll know and we'll probably be playing it at some point, but. Uh, yeah, I bought it on Wii U, but, they, but, I, but I haven't played it yet. Oh my gosh, dude! The, it's so I mean, it's worth just... the play. I'm I'm really excited for it because they're remastering it and they're changing the way everything kind of goes. Yeah, and they're mm-hmm. changing the, the whole tu- they're changing the whole tutorial stuff too because that was like every, they're they're literally they're probably pretty much remaking at least the opening of that game because like I really actually like Connor as a character like. He's very like stoic and really reminds me of like, like when I was little, I did this thing called Indian Guides. It was like fake Cub Scouts, uh, and like we would actually have like real kind of like uh, Indian chiefs come in and 
like talk to us about Native American culture and stuff. And like I thought, in that respect, I thought they did a great job of of portraying that stuff. But like playing that, dude, that first like five to six hours was like, I, and it probably wasn't even that long. It's that's probably just over exaggerating. But like mm. it felt that long just because it was so boring. And I'm like, your all your marketing is about this really cool Native American like assassin that throws tomahawks and and you know does all these cool things and you're making me play as what hate them or whatever like that's that's not fun <laughs> where am i supposed to push this box to ray where do i push this the, box the box you got to push it over is, is it the first box yeah first box you got to push over there's this like little Nailed spot it. over to the right like yeah. where like of this little hut i guess mm-hmm I think I yeah. I think I nailed it. I nailed it. I think. Nailed it. Nailed it. Not the gumdrop buttons. I actually mentioned that in my uh in, <laughs> if you did you listen to that? I did. That was when funny. I did the best stuff. It's funny like, it's funny because I kinda of forgot about that and that actually made me add it into the episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, I guess I'll follow well, Nadine because she seems to be going the right way, maybe. Well, that was know. early. That was early in the history of Nerds Gone Rogue. I think Rogue. it was like episode like ten or twelve or something. But anyway, sorry, I mean, Ed, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say that. Uh, I mean, oh, crap. whatever their next Uncharted is, I'm definitely gonna play. It. Like, I definitely would buy it and play it. I think I just hope that. I just hope that they change. They, I think, that they changed it up. I mean, I think it needs some infusion of something. You know, a little. I mean, it's cool, like, the big set pieces and the story moments and stuff are cool, but, like, I feel like it needs something. It's so hard to, like, the train scene from 2 is very hard to top, and they, like, I don't really remember in, th was there something in 3 that was similar to the train sequence that was, like, this big moment that, like... I think with the ship. Yeah, with, with, yeah there uh... was the ship, there was the big ship thing. Yeah, you're right. And then, like, I don't, I don't know. I felt like it was just like really hard to top that again. I, I think. I just but that know. car scene, that car scene chase in Uncharted Four, though. Man, that that was something. That was too long. <laughs> oh, dude, but it was so tense the whole time. Like, I, no. I really enjoyed it. It was. I wouldn't say it was perfect, me. but it was, it was enjoyable. Yeah. It's just, it's just like they, they do like. It's weird because they do that kind of stuff. I don't want to say like they do it all the time, but like when you when you do stuff like that, it's hard. It's always hard to top it, you know. And you know that I think it go, not to keep referencing God of War, but like when Ascension came out, we already had like all these huge things and already taken down all these gods and stuff to the point where like when Ascension came out, it was like, how do you top God of War two and three? And I think that's kind of why it didn't do so well. And and you know they they did something to reinvigorate the series and the character uh, mm -hmm. of Kratos and and really gave us something different in uh, what essentially is God of War 2018. Oh, and yeah, no, I've died like three times. Rip. That was my first death. Rip. I don't really know where I'm supposed to be going. Am I supposed to jump on these neon signs? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just finished that section. Oh, did you? Yeah, I'm on the boat now. Oh, I I don't see a boat. Oh crap! It's the next section, next level. Am I supposed to go the... all the oh, way down to the joking. ground, or I don't think so. Uh, but I I think whatever Uncharted becomes next, I think it needs that infusion of something like mm -hmm. that to really make people care. Uh, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I think people will still buy it because I yeah, think I, I think do. Sony's first party is doing. Uh, I think a lot of people think that their first party is doing uh, some good stuff, but like Uncharted is Uncharted is pretty much their only franchise that they have now that's like not new. I guess you could say God of War also, but like, well, I mean, Last of Us technically isn't new anymore. Yeah, but I mean, it's still newer, I guess. Uh, in in it the doesn't grand, have a lot in, of games in the series. In the grand scheme of of things, yeah. I guess I could just push this over here. Because like uh, Resistance, Killzone, uh, 
Uncharted. Those are some of their like games that got like three or more. So they have a uh, they have a stable of games. Oh, P- all started on PS3 pretty much, except for Killzone. Killzone the first Killzone was what on PS2. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just pushed that box through the apartment building. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Somebody's uh, gonna be have rain's gonna be falling on their head somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I. To me, like, I, I, dude, I can't. Man, you just reminded me that Horizon existed. <laughs> I yeah, can't. Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn was was like that was that one thing where it was just like, oh my goodness. I mean, if um, what like that's if when Horizon Zero Dawn two is announced, that's when I will be purchasing a PlayStation Five. Like, you know, like I I I love that game so much. I actually like. Because I never finished the DLC, which is sad. Because mm-hmm. it's like I I wanted it so bad, and then I never finished it. Uh, Ed, we played a little bit for Pod and Play Season Two, I think. Yes, of the of the DLC, and like I no uh, of Horizon Zero Dawn, but just play. I think you did the DLC because yeah. I didn't have it. Yeah, well, I mean, like the the DLC is is an episode, but oh, yeah. Uh, and I never went and finished it because I got just distracted by something else, and then, and then the baby was born, and then I just didn't. I barely played any games last year, to be honest with you. Yeah. So, um, so what did you? Did you, either of you guys play the Golden Abyss for Vita? I I did a, own a Vita. I played so. a little bit of it, and then I got hooked on like Gravity Rush, and uh, what was the other game? I think I played a lot of Little Big Planet Vita. Uh, because I got a Vita late. I didn't buy one right at launch. I got one late. Uh, and then it was already part of the instant game collection. Uh, yeah. un- I think it was Uncharted, Gravity Rush. There, There's a couple other things, too. Super Stardust, I think. Uh, so I didn't I didn't finish it. But uh, is that one... you think that one's worth going back to? What, the... Um, it, it is... Like, if, if, you, it, if you, know, you have get... a Vita... And and if you have a Vita already, and you want an Uncharted, if you want a Uncharted experience, like, do you think it's worth going back to, or you think somebody should just play like these ones? Instead? I think I think it's actually worth going back to if you already have a PlayStation Vita, and you know you got it maybe with the instant game collection like collection a long time ago and stuff like that. Like I really feel because I mean honestly, um, when we first got. Um, when we first got the Vita, the Vita was essentially giving us console-like experiences on the go, um, which is what we saw, you know, with like, um, you know, Uncharted, Golden Abyss, and those cool games we had Wipeout and stuff like that. That kind of gave you that that um, that kind of thing. And then we got other stuff like uh, Assassin's Creed Three Liberation, which was actually really good, uh-huh. and, and I was enjoyable. But then we got stuff like. Uh, the uh, the resistance burning skies and the Co- Call of Duty Black Ops declassified, which were terrible. Um, but then you got other stuff like um, what was it Freedom Wars and you know so Sony you know Sony did a lot, but after a while it just they shifted their focus away from it and it just kind of seemed like they were half heartedly in it mm-hmm. by then and by you know by like 2014, two years later it was kind of like whatever sony because a lot of the games that they kind of hedged their bets on um they didn't really get a chance to really see come to fruition because people weren't buying them well i think a lot Um, of people were mad about the memory card situation too yeah the memory card situation was really one of the uh one of the uh very pain big pain points that the vita had um you know, but then you also had another good. Um, I don't know if you how much of Vita you played, but there was also Killzone Mercenary, which was kind of leading up. It, it felt like into the Killzone Shadowfall, like lead up into that kind of thing with the PlayStation Four launch, which was like, hey, this is actually really good, you know. And then, but um, yeah, but that really kind of just hurt them. And then of course, it's just like you know they didn't, they never really found their footing with any big 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 games like you know like the ds oh you know the 3ds and stuff like that had their big hitters like they had their pokemons they had their this they had their that and then they ended up getting mario kart for 3ds and then they got smash brothers for 3ds so those things kind of just let you know the uh 
kind of let the uh, the whole thing happen, and we're actually coming up um, soon on the on the what would is it seventh anniversary of the Vita. Mm-hmm. You know, well, this will this will end up airing long after that, but you know what I mean. As of the time of the recording, you know, so, it's one thing, of those fun things. I think the biggest failure of the Vita was itself that Sony itself and and the fact that Sony didn't believe in it enough to market it because of all the uh, feedback they were getting from their decisions. So if if the Vita was this great system that they hoped it to it was to be, um, Sony should have kept at it regardless of how sales of that system was go was going because they just Sony themselves never gave it a chance to breathe. They I mean, never gave think, it a chance. I think Sony oh. did the well. I was just to play off of your point. It is like. I really think Sony did almost the opposite of what Nintendo did with the 3DS, right? Where, like, the 3DS wasn't selling great at the beginning, but Nintendo kind of doubled down. And they did the Ambassadors program, you remember that? Yeah, mm-hmm. it, they did the Ambassadors program. They cut the price by, what, $80, I think? Which yeah. was, like, unheard of at the but time. Like, I forgot. But the grappling hook. <laughs> the grappling hook. Uh but you know, like I, I, and then where Nintendo doubled down. Now, granted, it Nintendo kind of needed to double down because like, the Wii U started not to sell great, and the, they were kind of relying on their handheld business. But like, Sony kind of moved into the PlayStation Four full time, and then kind of got into the VR game. And you know, the Vita is a great system for like indies and stuff. But like, they, I, they never really found, like you said, they never really found their footing and got their groove in. I mean, they had some great games like. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people like really like the Killzone game that was on there. Uh, you know, they they had Uncharted and Gravity Rush, and Tearaway was an interesting experiment on there. Uh, Little Big Planet, it's probably the definitive version of Little Big Planet, just be, with the touch controls and stuff. Like, yep, I really love that version of Little Big Planet. I mean, and then you had like Persona 4 Golden, and you know, like I mentioned, you know, earlier we had you know like or like you mentioned Gravity Rush. Um, you know, stuff like that. And then, you know, we also saw some of the remasters that came through with, like, the Final Fantasy X and X-2. Yeah. Um, HD remasters. Um, you know, and then it just seemed like it just never kind of... And then it got it had the PS1 classics on there and, and a ton of indie stuff. Like, it's a an, it's yeah. an, it's an nice little system, you know? It ended up becoming uh, a, a good little system. It just, you know, I think... I think if if I don't want to say if Sony put a little bit more effort into it because I I think that's like the wrong choice of words. But if they if they would have had like one kind of bigger hit for the Vita, I think it would have done better. And like I think if they would have like changed directions and been like, hey, you know, we're making a Vita 2.0, we're we're allowing you to use SD cards instead of our proprietary stuff. Like I think, I think it would have, I think it would have gone a, a little bit further. It, it, and it would have if they, first of all, well, second of all, if they would have supplied stores with more Vitas. Because after literally, like after the yeah, first, yeah, I, I had a really hard time finding a Vita. I actually had to order mine off of Amazon. And like the memory card section that you mentioned, Ray. A lot of stores didn't even get any. When they got the car, it was only two. And then because you couldn't, um, you, you couldn't like substitute it if you weren't able to get it. You had to go with that Sony car. You were screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and know, like even if you were to like, a lot of people wanted that 64 gig card, and you couldn't find the 64 gig card anywhere. You know, it was always the 16 or the 32. So, yeah, everybody had to uh, order there in Japan. And once you started putting, you know, Uncharted and Final Fantasy and, you know, that that Borderlands port, like, once you start putting all these bigger games on there, like, you needed that 64 gig cart if you wanted to carry yeah. them around, you know? I think, and a lot of people were just confused, just like, the, the games are cartridge-based. Why would we need a memory card for it? Well, you know, to, even... to save. I mean, nobody's saving their games to the cartridges anymore. <laughs> it, you know I mean, what I mean? It, I mean, Nintendo still is. No, they're not. In a sense. No, you you still need a memory card with to the, save the, your games. With the 3DS? What's yours? going on, Juggy? Oh. With That's the 3DS? In my chat. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> hey, oh, Juggy. The... I know you can't hear me, but... 
uh, with the 3ds uh they were still selling memory things uh you were still selling uh selling you were still selling uh on the um on the game card because if your if your 3ds broke or something and you uh went and played put it on a different 3ds your game will automatically start for your save data yeah i don't know maybe i just didn't notice that because i most of my 3ds games are digital so maybe i just didn't realize that you know i don't know but i i I I I would I would actually really like to see Sony put out another handheld at some point. You know, I think I think with the success of the Switch and I think if they took notes from the Switch and and maybe not like make a dockable thing that you could plug into your your TV or whatever or maybe just make maybe just make a system with an HDMI out on the bottom of it, you know, like maybe that's all you do. But like I think we could get unique experiences on another PlayStation handheld. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that, to be honest with you. I think if you made one that was maybe a couple years from now that could remote, remote play PlayStation 5 games and, uh, and even PlayStation 4 games, like if you made one that could remote play and actually, like, I don't know, have PS3 or PS4 style graphics and gave us cool portable God of War Uncharted adventures, like... What if you what if you gave us a God of War game that told the story of Kratos between God of War three and four, on a handheld? You know that type of story could fit on there. I don't know. Yeah, I, that I, would be a good thing, you know, for a hand, Sony handheld to kind of offer those um, on schedule. You know those kind of things. Great. Or maybe that maybe that's where Drake's daughter's adventure comes in, is like the handheld no version of the game. But I don't know. I. I I think uh, I think the Vita is a cool little system, and now you know I enjoy my Switch because of what it kind of <laughs> almost took from the Vita in a sense. You know the indie games, and I think I think the Switch is thriving in a way that the Vita didn't because of first party and you know not using proprietary technology to save your games and stuff like that. And I think if Sony really took looked at the switch hard and, and made a competing handheld i think it would do well um, so but anyways we are hitting we're almost at an hour on this game so uh we're gonna we're gonna wrap this episode of pot and play i want to thank everybody for watching uh thank you ray for for joining us uh I'm, I'm i'm glad you you joined us and got to talk some uncharted with us and allowed us to play on your stream even though people can't hear us <laughs> no you're no very you're you know you're very welcome you know and uh, i want to thank you guys for letting me uh letting me be here with you guys you know it's always a pleasure to kind of be able to play and hang out with you guys we don't nearly do it enough as we should probably um so one last thing before we go and i, I want to ask okay so if you have to order the games, so you know we're looking at mainland the the mainline games, and then we also want to throw the the golden abyss in there just because it, it it deserves its own spot. Yeah. Uh, like if I was to order the Uncharted games right now. Nice work. Yeah, like your top, like you know, in order. Uh, what is there? One, two, three. I think I would I, go. I think I would go two Lost Legacy, three, four. And from what I've heard, Golden Abyss is better than one, so I would go Golden Abyss one. Yeah, that would be my uh, order. I would love two. I really like two a lot. I would go uh, Lost Legacy, Uncharted three, four, Golden Abyss one, and then two. Wow, two last. He's putting literally the most critically acclaimed game in the series at the bottom. It's Ed, you know. It's yeah, so mine head. would be mine would be two, then three, then golden, uh, not golden abyss, then two, three, probably four, then lost legacy, then um, golden abyss, and then one. My one would be my like it was a great game for what it was, but trying to go back and play one is rough. It's yeah. a little rough. They they fix they fix some things in the in the collection, but it's still like. Man, once you get past one and go to two and three, like there's a significant jump in. Man, you're sailing. Once you once you get past the first one, when you, when you're doing a replay of them, yeah, and you get past one, dude, two, it just like sets you in, and you're just you're all hit the ground running, and you never look back. Yeah, 
I couldn't stand none of Two's illogical writing and set pieces. There it is. It, it only took an hour. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I'm just, I'm just messing with you, Ed. You know how I like to mess with you. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for watching. Ray, you want to plug your your stuff one more time? Sure, guys. So uh, you can find me, Ray El Capitan, at uh, twitch.tv forward slash El Capitan Plays. Um, I don't currently have a schedule or anything yet, um, just because baby and life and kids and everything kind of kind of you can't schedule. You're anything, on that. So. You're on that dad schedule. Yeah, I'm on that dad schedule. So you know, if you do give me a follow there, just turn the notifications on if you want to come hang out in my stream. So that way you'll get a notification. Hey, Ray, streaming by the way. Um, you can also find me with the uh, Nerd Overdrive podcast, which I co-host with Becky and Lee Navarro of Phoenix Overdrive um, and Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life. Uh, like I said, fb.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. That's where you can find all of our Extra Life stuff, uh, which is for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Um, and youtube.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive, as well as um, twitch.tv forward slash phx underscore overdrive. Oh, oh, and also check us out. Um, check out our gaming community, much like the NGR gaming community and your Nerds Gone, you know, Platinum and all that stuff. Uh, for uh, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash PO Nation. So for the Phoenix Overdrive Nation. So we talk about pretty much everything nerdy there. So okay. Nice. Well, you can find Ed at that retro code. You can find me at CoreyNHD713 on Twitter. You can, uh, if you want to, a... A, uh, the best mediocre PlayStation podcast on the internet. You can download Nerds Gone Platinum on Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but I'm just kidding. I love those guys. Uh, even though we're doing a PlayStation episode and they're not on it. Jerks. Uh, but if you want to download our other shows, you can check out Nintendo Power Block, uh, Arsenal X, our Xbox show, uh, Nerds Gone Rogue proper, as well as our game-specific shows in Javelins for Hire, uh, Dark Zone Junkies, and Tower Casuals. Uh, you can you can download those. Uh, there's a podcast that goes up every day. You can also download the B-Sides feed, which is uh, our B-Side conversations, plus interviews, spoiler casts. Uh, I just drove the Jeep off of a cliff. That was funny. <laughs> uh, you can download all those. Uh, just, just search Nerds Gone Rogue. You should be able to find everything you want to find. Uh, and if not, you can go to ngrradio.com slash subscribe to download or follow any of us or any of our shows where you want to listen to them or follow us. So thank you, everybody, for watching. And stay tuned next week for more Pod and Play. And remember to keep on playing. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Rise above. Launched his empire's wealth, built a new. That's a good place to stop because I'm stuck in this Jeep. And then